New Lands by Charles Hoyfort, Part 1, Chapter 10b. In the year 1892, a fifth satellite of Jupiter was discovered. Maybe it would conform to Kepler's law if anybody could find out accurately in what time the faint speck does revolve. The sixth and seventh satellites of Jupiter revolve so eccentrically that, in line of sight, their orbits intersect. Their distances are subject to very great variations, but, in as as it might be said that their mean distances do conform to Kepler's third law, or would, if anybody could find out what their mean distances are, we go on to the others. The eighth and ninth conform to nothing that can be asserted. If one of them goes around in one orbit at one time, the next time around it goes in some other orbit and in some other plane. Inasmuch then as Kepler's third law, deduced from the system of Jupiter's satellites, cannot be thought to extend even within that minor system, one's thoughts stray into wondering what two pins in a cushion in Louisville, Kentucky, look like from somewhere up in the Bronx, rather than to dwell any more upon extension of any such pseudo-proportionality to the supposed solar system as a whole. It seems that in many of Kepler's demonstrations was this failure to have grounds for a starting point before extending his reasoning. He taught the doctrine of the music of the spheres and assigned bass voices to Saturn and Jupiter, then tenor to Mars, contralto to the female planet, and soprano, or falsetto, rather, to little Mercury. And that is all very well and consistently worked out in detail, and it does seem reasonable that, if ponderous, if not lumpy, Jupiter does sing bass, the other planets join in according to sex and huskiness, however, one does feel dissatisfied.